console trace prints out a stack trace when it's called. This can be useful when debugging JavaScript as it lets you see all the callers leading up till that point in the program. Let's take a look at this. So I'm going to be using the Chrome DevTools to demonstrate this, but you can also use this in the command line or in an editor like VS Code. So you can see I have two functions that I've defined. There's the function foo here, which is actually going to check the type of its input, and if it's the wrong type, call console trace. And then there's the function bar, which pretty much just calls foo. Now let's actually go and call bar here with an unexpected type. So we're going to pass in a string when a number is actually expected by foo up here. So when I go and I run this, you can see that it has printed out the result here, but it's also gone and printed out the console trace. So what has happened here is that when console trace was called, it went and printed out the complete call stack at that point in the program. You can see that we have the function foo, which was the function that is currently being called, and then the caller, which was bar in this case. So you can see all of the callers leading up until that point in the program where console trace was being called. Now, the nice thing about console trace is that it does not affect the behavior of the program. So we didn't have to throw an exception or anything. We were able to just print out that stack trace just by calling console trace here. Now, there's a few fancy things you can do with console trace that make working with it a little bit easier. So right now, it's just always going to print out the same console trace statement. But if we're using this at multiple places in our program, we might want to label each one so it's clear which uh, trace is actually being printed. So console trace actually accepts arguments, and we could pass in a string to do that labeling. So I could say here, like foo got unexpected type. And now if I go and I redefine foo and then call bar again, you can see that it's now printing out a trace that has been labeled with the string that we passed in. So it's saying foo got unexpected type and then printing out that same stack trace that we we're seeing before. Now console trace actually takes the exact same arguments as console log. So we can even pass in more complex types. So if I wanted to, I could go and pass in the value of x, for example, here, I could pass in an array of values. So I could say one, two, three, um, so I can pass in any arguments that I want to console trace. And then when we go and run the program, these will be printed to the console here. So I can see that it's printed out um, the value of x, which in this case is hello world. And then it's printed out that array. And because the array is a dynamic object, I can actually go and interact with that, just like I would be able to if I had printed the array using console.log. So that's a quick introduction to console trace in JavaScript.